Good morning and welcome to the amazing Glebe House Gallery and Gardens. So Glebe House, the former home of Derrick Hill, this imposing house is set in these sumptuous gardens with tall mature trees, lots of undergrowth and some wonderful flowers and lawns around us. And this whole site is set on the edge of Loch Garden. Loch Garden nestled at the foothills of the Derry Red Mountains and it's the perfect place for us to listen for the dawn chorus. So what is the dawn chorus? Well birds, much like ourselves, are very vocal. Birds chat all year round. They have a variety of little chirps and cheeps to communicate, to warn of danger, to share where food might be and to tell all sorts of other things which we can only guess at. But at this time of year the birds are doing something different. At this time of year the birds are singing. Singing to mark out a territory, singing to attract a mate. The lengthening day and this amazing time of year is waking up all sorts of nature. The trees are starting to burst their buds. So many flowers and other things are starting to come out of the soil. The insects are starting to wake up. And with that wonderful change of season, a lot of our migrant birds have started arriving back to our shores to spend our summer with us. And all of the birds, both the ones that are here all year round and the migrant birds, have one thing on their mind at this time of year, and that is the breeding season. So the dawn chorus that we're starting to hear waking up all around us. Dawn chorus, it's the males that sing and males like to proclaim their territorial rights. So the males will find a nice area that suits their habitat, suits their style and they will sing out to all the others of their species and declare their fitness, their health, declare the fact they got through the night and tell all other birds that they are strong and this is their patch, this is their area. For most birds, it's a few exceptions, it's the males only that sing. But the females are listening, and the stronger the song, the longer the song, it shows how the bird has survived a cold, cold night, and has a better ability to build up fat reserves, and perhaps will make a better mate, a better breeding partner. The first birds that start joining in on the dawn chorus are the thrushes, the song thrushes, the blackbirds, and birds that are pretty closely related, the robin. Their eyes in their head are proportionally quite large, so they see the first little bit of light, that first little chink, even though it's quite a bit before sunrise yet. And that little bit of light has woken them up. It's not bright enough for them to go off and start foraging yet, so they use this opportunity to display, to call out to their mate, to say, I've made it, I've made it through the night. I'm strong and I'm fit. And they're also calling out to all the other birds of their own species and proclaiming their rights to a territory, their rights to an area, to establish a nest, to establish breeding rights. So right now the moon is very bright and the first light was just starting. So it's 20 past five and already a number of the birds are awake. We can hear a few song thrushes around us repeating every phrase that they say. An amazing number of phrases but they repeat, repeat, repeat which makes them a nice one to try and pick out. And we can hear the high fluting notes of the robins which are above us. There's at least three robins singing around us right now. They're singing to each other. Robins are a little unusual. Robins sing all year round and the female robins sing. For most birds it's only the males. But in robins both the males and the females sing and they establish a territory all year round which is also unusual. But this time of year right now it's all about the male and the male's song has got sweeter, it's got richer and it's got more complicated. There's lots of layers and lots of little notes which are beyond our hearing, beyond our hearing range. But the other birds are picking up. The female robins are listening with interest and the stronger and longer that song, the more chance that bird is good at, has an ability of being able to forage, to catch food, to feed those chicks, which it needs to do hundreds of times every day. We also have another amazing sound, which we don't hear too much anymore in the countryside. We can hear a couple of cuckoos. There's a cuckoo on the far side of the lake and there's one up behind the gardens here. 
and they are singing, singing away, also trying to attract a mate. Having arrived all the way back from Africa, they are blasting out their song. Cuckoos sometimes, when there's a full moon like there is tonight, cuckoos will sometimes sing right through the night. It's 25 past five, and the great tit has just woken up. It's repeating its little teacher, teacher, teacher song. The great tit, like so many of the birds, has a huge variety of notes, huge variety of different little sounds it makes, but has a couple of specific songs, specific song that is there to attract its mate. Also in the background is the deeper notes of the wood pigeon with their five notes that they repeat over and over. And those deeper sounds can carry for quite some distance. It's about half past five now. And the light is increasing very quickly, revealing the beauty of these gardens and the beauty of this whole area. And just above us are two different warblers that are starting to sing. Warblers are another group of birds, much like those finches or thrushes. And high up in the trees is a black cap with its scratchy but very beautiful song singing out. The black cap has made it all the way back from Africa only in the last couple of weeks already is establishing a territory, singing out to all the female black caps that are around us, unseen but listening. The first chaffinch has just started to sing. First chaffinch, one of the birds that are here all year round, with its vigorous, strong song that finishes with a little flourish. That's the first of the finches that we've heard. And a chiff chaff has started joining in in the background as well. Chiff chaff is one of the very first migrants. It's probably been here for at least four weeks or so. And has its simple, simple little song of just chiff chaff, chiff chaff, which it repeats all summer long. Oh well, right up until middle or end of June, the end of the breeding season. A huge number of birds starting to sing all around us now. And the lake seems to act like an amphitheater. We can see the first light, the mist is starting to raise off it as the temperature starts to change. And as more and more light becomes available, more and more birds are starting to wake up, starting to be triggered by that light, and starting to think about getting their day off with a good sing song. Good way to start the day. So just above us we have a willow warbler. This time of year is a wonderful time of year, this end of April, or just the very, very beginning of May. It's a wonderful time of year for listening for the bird song, but looking for the bird song too, because a lot of the trees, like this big common ash tree above us, they haven't woken up yet. They haven't responded to that ever increasing light. In another couple of weeks, those ash buds will swell and burst out. And a couple of weeks after that, all of the canopy, all of the leaves above us, will be completely covered over and those birds will be able to hide. But right now we can see as well as hear the little willow warbler just above us. The willow warbler is possibly the second most common bird that comes back to Ireland after the swallow. It's estimated over a million willow warblers come to Ireland every year. And it's a sound that's very familiar to people. If you listen to that gentle, gentle little song as it trickles down, and to my mind, it always sounds like it's not quite happy with its song. At the very end, it's like it's giving up, and then it starts again. So now, as well as so much bird song we have around us, we have a lot of the chitter, a lot of the chat that's going on, a lot of the little communication calls. We can hear blue tits 
we can hear great tits and cold tits all around us singing out their song, as well as many other birds. We can hear the wood pigeons, we can hear the song thrushes, and in the distance is a blackbird, the deep call of the blackbird. The older the blackbird is, the more phrases it adds onto its song, the more phrases it learns and adds on, and the song gets richer and deeper. The younger blackbirds have been singing the last few weeks, the ones from last year and the year before, and they've been singing out in the hope of attracting a mate and establishing a territory while the older males were listening on. But now, end of April, early May, breeding season has really got going. Those older males with their longer song, with their more experience, haven't survived quite a few winters at this stage. They're starting to blast out their song, attract their mates and establish a territory, become dominant. Just above us, with a simple little call, the dee 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 that is the blue tit. And the blue tit, very beautiful, very small, with its bright, bright blue head. And of course it has a blue head all year round, but the blue is at its very strongest right now. A little bit lower down in the feathers is where that strong blue colour is. And this is the birds having molted at the end of last summer. Those feathers have been worn down and worn down through use all winter long. And now, in springtime, they're worn down just to the perfect height where the blue is at its strongest. And of course, the birds can see on a different spectrum to us, so that blue jumps out. It's believed that the stronger colour that blue is, the more virile that bird must be, or the more attractive it is to its mates. So it's quarter past six, the sun is just starting to come up over the hill, just about to peep up. And most of the birds at this stage, they're up, they're still singing, but they're going on about their business. The daisies that are around us are still closed, but very shortly they'll open up in response to the light and the ever increasing warmth. It's getting much, much warmer now. There was a bumblebee that we heard just a moment ago. Bumblebees have that amazing ability to be able to generate their own heat in their body by buzzing. And then once their body temperature is up high enough, they start flying around and foraging from flower to flower. And in an area like this, Glebe House, with its amazing gardens, its lush gardens, which have such a variety of habitats and such a variety of flowers, providing pollen for those insects all the time, right throughout the season. And of course, that in turn is providing food for all of the birds that are, are starting to forage around us. And the robin singing just above us now, announcing its territory, but it was just pecking away at some of the little bugs that are in the tiny little cracks. You'll get the blue tits going into the cherry blossoms and into the apple blossoms, picking out bugs, helping to preserve those flowers, but also inadvertently doing a little bit of pollinating themselves. So now the day has truly begun. The birds have finished their dawn chorus, finished their main display. They'll keep singing, keep reminding their mate of their presence, keep reminding their rivals that this is their territory, but they also need to get on with the important business of food for themselves, for their partner, of nest building, and then of course feeding their chicks. <laughs> <laughs> 